If you happen to wander on the Christian relationship side of YouTube, you'll find no shortage of videos about marrying young. Now, when I was a younger teen, I used to gobble these videos up because I too had the desire to get married at a young age. These days, I think the average age of being married is a little bit different for Canada or the United States, but it's somewhere around 30 years old, where back in the day, you know, it wouldn't be unusual for you to ask your grandparents and they would get married at 16 or 17 or 18 or 19 or 20. Uh, but nowadays it's like, well, that's seen as something that is very counter-cultural. Perhaps there's different groups that it's pretty usual that people get married pretty young. If you go to the Mormons or for us around here, Manitoba, um, the Mennonites, you know, there's different people like that, different groups like that that tend to get married a lot younger. Now, even Christian communities as well, it's kind of a joke that once you get in Bible school, ring by spring, you know, people are going to get married, you know, five seconds after they meet. All these sorts of jokes are pretty funny. But when we actually look into getting married young, what are the benefits and the detriments and maybe the cautions to getting married young? Now, for me, I didn't really get married that young. I got married at 24 years old. My wife is 21, so she got married a little bit younger than I did, obviously. So I didn't get married super young, but still, I think I have something to add to this conversation, some things that people maybe don't highlight as often. Now, what are the objections to getting married young? A lot of them come from a secular perspective. Things like, you know, marriage will just tie you down or you got to try out a lot of different people before you settle down. You got to have some fun. Now, from a Christian perspective, those objections can be pretty much disregarded because we don't see it as a benefit to be with a lot of people. That's actually counter to God's design. And we also don't see marriage as something that's negative, as something that ties you down or kills the fun but rather is this beautiful picture of Christ and his church. But maybe some more legitimate objections are that you're going to grow apart. You don't know who you are yet. You've, you've barely begun to be an adult and now you're getting married. You're bringing this other person in the, in the, in the equation. You, you, don't, you haven't discovered yourself. You haven't discovered what you like, what your personality is like. So maybe you line up on things now, beliefs or passions or interests, but in 20 years from now, who knows? Maybe they'll be completely completely different. Now I saw a video on this topic which I'll share with you in a second and it's all about marrying young and is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Uh, but what I think when I think about these objections is okay, when we were dating, when me and my wife were dating, we grew closer together. We began to take interest in uh, each other's interests. We began to say similar things that the other person says. We use each other's mannerisms or catchphrases, things like that. So in my experience, it wasn't that we were grow growing further apart, even when we were together as time went on, we we're actually growing closer together because of the proximity we had with one another. Now, I think what often people are referring to is the fact that they don't really spend a lot of time with their spouse. They're caught up in career or other things that are stealing their time. And in so doing, you're not spending that quality time. You're not growing together. You're living basically two different lives. And of course, you're going to grow apart if you live two different lives. If you both have separate careers that are very demanding, if you barely spend an hour with each other a day, of course, you're going to grow apart. But in my experience, man, over, over the time that we dated and engagement and now are married, we've just grown closer and closer together because we spend so much time together and we take interest in what the other person is interested in and we have lots of conversations because we love each other okay let's watch that video so i got married at 19 I'm not telling you to get married at 19 it's just when i got married but i will tell you this just about every person that lectured me and told me i was getting married too young because what i really needed to do was go out there and live it up a little bit and mix it up with some other people before i settled down yeah pretty much all those people are divorced now and maybe it's because they looked at marriage as the end of the adventure rather than the beginning of it which i think is pretty stupid because when you find someone that you truly love respect and are passionate about and they feel the same way about you why would you not want to go through life with that person? Why would you not want to share experiences together? Because life's going to throw you a lot of curveballs. You're going to have peaks. You're going to have valleys. And believe me, there's going to be times when it is you and her against the world. And when you come out the other side, you will have a whole new appreciation for what it means to have someone that you truly care about with you through everything. So I'll tell you this much. If you found that person and the only thing that's keeping you from marrying is because some idiot has convinced you you need to go first make a bunch of mistakes with other people. Yeah, I would go ahead and ditch that advice and uh, put a ring on it.
The best thing that I think he said in that video was that many people look at marriage as the end of the adventure rather than the beginning of the adventure. This is pretty consistent. They talk about marriage as the old ball and chain. It's something that's going to weigh you down. It's going to hinder your life. It's going to keep you at home when you'd rather be out with people. It's going to hinder what you truly want to do. It's going to stifle your dreams. But to me and, and to him, and I think to a lot of other people that have gotten married at a younger age, it is the beginning of the adventure. I can't imagine doing the things that I'm doing without my wife. Like that makes everything, my life, so much more fulfilling and exciting and wonderful because I get to share with somebody. Now that might sound cheesy and corny, but it's true. I see it as the beginning of the adventure. So what are some of maybe the cautions to getting married young? What are some legitimate reasons to say, hey, let's put the brakes on this. Now the first one is just very practical. It's are you financially ready to get married? And when people talk about financially ready. I, I'm not talking about like you got a hundred thousand dollars in the bank. Obviously like what well, that's just stupid, right? What I am talking about is, do you have a job? Okay, that's good, right? And do you have a vision of how you're going to progress, right? Do you have a mission? If you have no mission and no trajectory and really no passion, like those are some things you want to be focusing on before you really bring a woman into the picture because all of a sudden you're putting that weight and that burden on her. You don't want to be doing that. So are you financially ready? Are you in a place to say, hey, wife, I can invite you into this. We can get married and I can provide for you if need be. If you can't work because ultimately one day I want to have a family. And so I want to be able to say, I have the vision. I have a mission towards being able to provide for this family. It won't always be easy and I won't always be successful in, in doing what I want to be doing for this family. And maybe I'll fail, but my heart is in it. And, and I'm working towards it. And I, and I do have an actual means of providing. You really don't realize how expensive a woman truly is until you bring one into your life. And uh, when that happens, you want to be ready and it'll save you so much headache. The second and most important thing, honestly, that I would caution you with is, are you actually ready to spiritually lead this woman? Like, are your devotions lackluster? Do you even spend time in the word? What is your prayer life like? Do you know what the word of God says? Are you capable of leading? yourself? And if you're not, then why do you suspect that you'll be capable of leading a woman? Now that might be a wake up call for you. But part of this is being honest with yourself. Part of this is being just brutally honest with yourself, assessing where you're at, and it's going to save you heartache. Because if you're not ready, then it is wise to say, hey, I love you, but I'm just not ready to, to be that spiritual leader in your life. And you don't deserve that. And so I'm going to figure out my stuff first. And I hope you'll wait for me in this and we'll still grow together, but I can't take that next step till I'm ready. Now, some guys will obsess a little bit too much about this and, and really just have a too high of an expectation of themselves. It's good to have high expectations, but at the end of the day, you are not perfect. This was a little bit of uh, my trouble going into marriage as well was saying, I don't know if I have what it takes to lead. Even though other people around me would, would affirm, hey, Isaac, you're, you're going to do okay. You're going to do all right. There was this expectation on myself of perfection. Maybe if you're, you've struggled with perfectionism, you want to do everything correctly. You want to do everything perfectly. The truth is you're not going to. You're going to fail. But where you need to be, and this is the most, um, and anybody that's married is going to tell you this. And it's very obvious, and you don't need to hear it from me, but... It's about asking for forgiveness, about being humble with it and saying, hey, I don't do this perfectly. I don't fulfill my role as a husband perfectly. Can you forgive me? And and asking God to help you correct the ship. One of my favorite sections of scripture is actually from Proverbs 5, verse 18. It says, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth, a lovely deer, a graceful doe. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. And if you are so blessed to have a wife in your youth, then delight in her and don't feel guilty about that and don't feel like, oh man, maybe I should be taking this step already because we're so young and maybe we, we need to live more life before this or be wise about it. Make sure you have people around you, mentors that can help lead you and guide you. But like the guy said in the video, man, like if, if the reason is just because some dude said, ah, you, you got to be with more people and you got to, you know, experience life more. Those aren't legitimate reasons. So go for it. Like it is such a blessing. I found so much blessing in marriage. I love it so much. I highly recommend it. A lot of people will caution you 
more than they will encourage you. They will say, this is tough about marriage and this is hard about marriage and this sucks about marriage and this is bad about marriage. Even in the Christian community, I want to be a voice that says, hey, marriage is awesome. Like I, I don't pretend to know everything about marriage, not even close. But from my experience and the people that I know and, and are, am friends with, marriage is a wonderful thing. So do it. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. If you want to support what I'm doing here on the Men on Mission YouTube channel and with the ministry in general, click the link in my description and head over to Patreon. This is the primary way that you can support my work in this and it would be so wonderful and you get access to all sorts of other stuff. So I'd ask you to do that if you can and you feel led to. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, keep pursuing the mission.